Good morning. I'm back. <laughs> welcome back to, uh, welcome back to me. <laughs> welcome back to our weekly move sessions. I have missed these. Oh my goodness. And I'm feeling a little bit fluffy and a little bit rusty and a little bit creaky. So today is going to be comeback day. <laughs> hey Yvonne, today's going to be um, gentle and ba basic, basic, simple movements today um, as I get going again. So let's get started. It feels so good to be back, but I am, I feel rusty, I feel creaky. So bear with me. I know some of you continued while it was gone, so I'm super proud of you. Um, I hope Betty, I hope you got your three workouts in last week, even though I didn't. So I missed four workouts over the course of the year since we started. So I may be able to make those up <laughs> so that I'm back on track with you. Uh, but in the meantime, just a reminder for those of you who are new or just starting back or just starting into this, if you're doing, if you're joining me for the first time, um, take it at your own pace. I'm going to be taking it at a gentler pace today just as I re-enter with my foot. I sprained my foot a couple weeks ago, tore some ligaments, and I'm super grateful that I can even be here right now. Um, but I may be modifying some stuff you can see as I go. I've been cleared. <laughs> so, and I just want to invite you to do the same thing. If you have to modify anything for your Whatever your challenges are, whatever your situation is, if you're new, like I said, if you're just returning from an injury or you're returning from just a hiatus, modify anything you need to, anything that doesn't feel right. I don't want to say it doesn't feel good because you know, sometimes what we're doing in here doesn't always feel good. Um, I may modify some of the jumping stuff in the warm up, so I'm going to show you what to do so that you can. Increase intensity even if I don't. Um, my goal is not to, I have been cleared to go ahead and do anything that doesn't hurt. <laughs> um, you know, what, what does that mean, right? <laughs> so I tend to be conservative when it comes to these things. I, I want to get back to it, right? Like I just want to get back to where I can go I can I can work out and move without restrictions, and so my my sort of frame of mind is I rather go I rather pay the price now than pay the price later in a bigger way, right? So um, I will be modifying stuff for myself, and that might be right for you. But I want to encourage you, those of you who have been doing this for a while now, you know when we increase intensity. Um, and you can go ahead and do so. So I may not do the third round at high intensity like I usually do. <laughs> How is everybody doing? I mean, it feels like forever. <laughs> feels like so long since I've been here. It's only been really only a week and a half. Uh, last week, I did nothing for those for those um, days. Okay, so we're gonna add a hop. If you are Ready? Look, I got my new shirt. I just keep ordering shirts off my own website because <laughs> I need. To, I figure I need to have one of each to, you know, model show them off. <laughs> my actually I can shirt because actually I can. It's like my mantra. So adding a hop if you're ready. If you're not, you can keep it at low impact. Woo! These feel good. <laughs> Again, keep it at low, no impact if you need to. This is just warm up. We add in a little bit of cardio work in our warm up every single time. Today we're going to be focused on basic, like large muscle group um, strength work. So a little bit of everything as, as I get back into it. All right, I'm testing it with each. Sometimes, too, I'm finding when, when you first start um, and your muscles are cold, things feel not as good. 
but then you get going and because the, the blood flow starts to flow to your muscles and provide oxygen and nutrients and all that stuff, it starts to actually feel better. Okay, how's everybody doing in terms of Christmas? Maybe you're at a low impact with this one. We had the hop in our third one. I am getting there, but man, I'm getting worried about shipping for some things. I know my company's really behind in shipping. Um, although I think we're almost caught up, thankfully. But I don't even think, I'm not even worried so much about us as Canada Post. Uh, I have something that's been sitting in Etobicoke, which is the sorting facility about 45 minutes from my house. It's been sitting there since November 18th. I ordered it on November 12th from, from Pandora, um, the jewelry. I ordered it for my daughter's birthday and it was from my son's when it split on this charm for her. And it was supposed to be here November 29th, but so I'm assuming, I don't know if that's, that's a Canada Post thing, like they're in their sorting facility. I know not too long ago, like when they were paying kind of the COVID price, right? Like the price for COVID. Um, that was where the issue was, was the sorting facility. Stuff would get there and then it would just <laughs> go MIA, never, never to be seen again, so. Okay, high knees. Oh, I didn't think I was gonna be able to do these. <laughs> so lifting those knees. Uh, you can go faster if you can, higher if you can. Lifting those knees right up. Nice bend. Using that inner core to stabilize. This is one of the things my physical therapist spoke to me about was my lack of use of the inner core. And honestly, it has nothing to do with how strong your abs are. Um, a lot of it has to do with retraining those muscles after childbirth, which a lot of us never do. Like before we have kids, those muscles are tight. Um, they're intact. They haven't been stretched, so to speak, to allow for the birth of a baby. And she kind of explained to me they're like this, and then they open up. And to get them back, like it's like the mind, body, subconscious uh, channel that we have to retrain. So I know from working with clients, okay, so you're going to add a hop if that works for you. Be careful on this one side. Um, I know with clients, Heather, <laughs> Heather knows, sometimes doing ab work, we're doing tons and tons of ab work and we're never seeing strength gains or improvements in our like functional strength. Like I'm not talking about, oh, you know, going from not having a six pack to having a six pack. You can have a six pack and have a really weak core. Um, and what we want, especially, you know, yeah, we all want a six pack for sure. Like for sure, I'd love a six pack. Honestly, I'll be honest. There's the bad news. I really believe six packs are hereditary. I know people who have six packs who have, you know, no business having six packs. And I, I know people that you know are super strong that don't have six packs. So it's just like something that you are kind of born with or or not. I was not. <laughs> Sadly, I'd love to have one. It's the one thing, you know, we always want what we don't have, right? If you have thick hair, you want thin hair. If you have curly hair, you want straight hair. If you, if you have abs, you want bigger boobs, whatever, right? So, um, anyway, what we want to do is work on that functional core, which is beneath it all. And that is what holds kind of your base. I like to call it our our box, which is like, <coughs> excuse me, this square. 
And that square is essentially your, your corset or your, like the belt for your body. And when that's not intact, things move that shouldn't move. And they take on stress that they shouldn't take on. So who we got today live? Hey, Dawn. Hey, Betty. Thank you. <sighs> Gosh, it's good to be back and moving. Honestly, it feels so fluffy and awful. Okay, so we're going to be doing squats, rows, and bicep curls for our first round, okay? So I'm going to grab my, you're going to want a bench or a step or something for these, for the rows. Um, those of you who, you know, have been waiting for me to come back, you can use heavier set to weight. I'm going to go a little bit light today just as I test my ankle out. We're going to do four sets of 30 seconds. So we're going to start with squats. Oh, I'm going to use a weight. And then if you have, uh, we're going to be doing bicep curls. So you want to have some weights as well. All right. Maybe a glass of water. All right, let's get this show back on the road. <laughs> so ready. Okay, so ready for squats to start. Okay, let's go. So dropping that butt down. What you want to focus on is that your knees are driving out over top of your toes. Okay, so you want to keep your knees tracking straight out. You don't want them caving in like this. I should have added a five second buffer. I'll do that for our second round. This is going to cover part of our... Okay, we're going to go right into rows. Okay, so this is one where you want to use that core. So you want to almost think of Lifting and contracting kind of that inner core, the inner corset. So, so you're bracing, you're bracing your midsection every time you lift the weight. You want to retrain your brain to do this automatically. So through weightlifting, um, I have trained my subconscious kind of bodily signals <laughs> um, to brace that area of my body anytime I lift something heavy, and that's from weight training. However, when I'm just going around in life, I don't do that. And that's when we run into trouble. We actually get our injuries not from the gym <laughs> because we're more, more aware and conscious of good form, and then now we're going to bicep curls. Back and biceps with some legs, okay? So this is another one where you want to Pull that belly button in and kind of, do you guys know what I mean? You want to contract, and some of you might not know what I mean. I know Heather and I have talked at length about this. But you want to tighten your midsection prior to the, the, the load, the work, if that makes sense. So you want to pull, pull in, but pull up. So you don't want to tighten your core like this. You want to tighten your core. I don't know if you can see that, but a lot of times we tighten our core, we do a pelvic tilt. No, we don't want to do that. We just want to pull the abs in without moving our hips, if that makes sense. This is something I'm going to encourage you all. I'm just changing, just giving us a five second buffer so we're not ripping ourselves off. <laughs> I want to encourage you to work on this in everything you do. If you have back, if you get back pain, Okay, ready? So back to squats. If you get back pain, so as you drive up from the squat, tighten that core, tighten that belly without impacting your hips. So what you're doing is pulling it in and then what it does is it actually supports and stabilizes the hips. So the hips aren't moving all over the place. Don, you're a runner. This is something um, you want to focus on in running. I'm gonna, I'm gonna certainly start being more aware of it. But I'll tell you, what happens later in the run when you get tired? This is where you get sloppy. 
And that's where we start to feel our run, right? We start to feel our hips hurt, or our lower back starts to ache, or our knees start to go. And that's because um, we stopped using those muscles. So it's sometimes when I'm driving, and I've shared this before, I think. Um, I don't know if anybody else, I'm short. So I know a lot of it for me is the way I fit into the car, the car, the vehicle. They're not made for short people often, unless you have a Honda or a Toyota, which I don't. I have a Ford, I have an F-150, <laughs> a giant truck. Um, the thing is, when you learn to do this, you get instantly stronger because you're, you're using different muscles. So when I brace my belly and I pull, that weight suddenly gets lighter <laughs> feeling. Uh, when I'm driving, I don't get it so much anymore with my new, like my new vehicle. But when I used to drive a Dodge, um, I would really feel in my lower back as I drove. And what I've learned now when I'm driving, or if I'm sitting on an airplane, let's say, if I'm sitting for too long and that lower back pain starts, it's usually because you've let go of those muscles. And over time, that strains, she was explaining to me, like the, the, the joints and the discs. And you cause damage, and then you cause issues that cause bigger issues. But anyways, I've learned to clench my butt cheeks. So I'll start with both. I'll squeeze my bum, and immediately you feel the tension release off your back. And then I'll alternate butt cheeks. And sometimes, when you go, it's a good thing to try when you're sitting. Can you squeeze one butt cheek at a time? Sometimes I can't, and the reason that you can't is because you've your glutes aren't activated. And when your glutes aren't activated, your back is now doing the, the job that your glutes are supposed to do, and that's not good. <laughs> your back doesn't want to do glute work. So there's my spiel for today. It's something that I'm going to work on um, over the next several months as I prep, prep for my big race because what's going to happen inevitably in that race is I'm going to get, I'm going to get tired, <laughs> like obviously. Um, my form is going to deteriorate and when your form deteriorates, other issues start. And so that's going to be my focus. So we're doing four steps like this, and then we're going to switch. So sometimes when we do plank exercises, and I say you don't want to rotate your body in these, that's the trick, is engaging that core. Who's ready for Christmas? I know I asked that already. My son put the tree up while I was away. <laughs> oh, the lights don't work. Like, we have two, if you watch my stories, two sad looking strips that are still lit. And I thought, every year it gets worse and worse. This is like last year, last year was the same, but they came on. Um, some of them came, came on. So bicep curls. I was hoping that would happen this year, but no luck so far. Uh, and every year I'm like, oh, I'll buy a new tree. We have, we have um, really high ceilings in our living room. So I need like a, a giant tree, like a really tall tree. They're not easy to find. And when you do find them, they're a lot of money. And I had to buy a vacuum. And I splurged on the vacuum, you guys. <laughs> I, I was like, everybody said Dyson, everybody said get a Dyson. And then I had like literally, like two or three people, maybe four, like reach out, like very strongly 
one lady, I don't even know her, strongly, like, do not buy a Dyson. So, and I've had a handful of people say they weren't happy with their Dyson after spending all that money. At the end of the day, I'm sure, I'm sure it would be fine with the Dyson. But when I was a little bit overwhelmed, so this is our last set, excuse me, <laughs> this is our last set like this. I was a little overwhelmed with all the choices, so I spoke to a, a client and friend who actually cleans houses, and she said, don't get Dyson. Um, she recommended Kenmore, which is what I had, and I have had, and have always liked, and didn't realize you could still buy those, because I used to get them at Sears. So I went to Amazon, I was gonna order a Kenmore. I was convinced, yep, that's what I'm gonna do. Here's the thing too, I think, are you guys canister or upright? Ladies, what do you guys use for your vacuum? I have always, like literally since, as long as I can remember, you know, all through my childhood, my mom always had a canister vacuum. And the only time I've ever used uprights is when you're in hotels and they have them in the closet. And I've used, and I always find them so, and I know they're not Dysons, but they're not like, I see that the Dysons are small and lightweight and compact and <coughs> I just couldn't, I decided I couldn't wrap my head around an upright. So I went to Amazon, I literally had it in my cart, the Kenmore, canister, and I had to wait until, I think today, to get it. It was going to take a few days. And I decided, I want my vacuum now. <laughs> I'm tired. Of, it's been a long time. We've been making do with two of our vacuums. We have two vacuums. We have a central vac. I'm sure you guys don't care about any of this, but I'm just rambling. Um, the central vac has never worked since we moved into this house. <laughs> my husband has fixed, if I didn't have weights right now, I'd have air quotes happening, fixed it a handful of times. It's never, it's never been fixed, you guys. It's never fixed. Okay, that is round one. We're going to take a full minute now. We're going to go to round two where we're going to do sumo squats. So we're still doing squats, but we're going to do chest and triceps this time. So anyways, it's been a long time. I decided I want it now. The other thing is, I have this, I'm sure you're all women, I'm sure you can relate to this. I can't buy something that's not on sale. Like, there's so many sales, I couldn't bring myself to just pay full price. So the Kenmore that I was going to buy was like, almost half the price of the one that I got, but it wasn't on sale. The one I bought was $300 off, so I paid $300 more to get the one that was on sale than to pay full. It makes no sense. I know it makes no sense, you guys. I get it. But that's what I did. So I bought a, I don't know how to pronounce it, M-I-E-L-E, -E. Mila, Mila, Mila? I think it's called Mila. I, I never knew that. I thought it was a meal. <laughs> um, I bought a Mila. And I freaking love it. I hate cleaning. I don't actually do very much cleaning. I get my kids to do all the cleaning. But the one thing that I like is I like to vacuum. I don't mind vacuum. Okay, so we're doing squats, sumo squats first. All right, let's go. So, knees are going out to the side. You wanna actually drive your knees to the back of the room. Think about driving them to the back, back of the room. So almost like a plie. This is gonna work your inner and outer thighs. What I want you to be conscious of, something that I am right now being conscious of, is, is your weight evenly distributed on both feet, or do you press up more on one side, okay? So we're doing presses. If you don't have a bench, you can do this on the floor, okay? I want you to think of when every time you press, using that core, squeezing, and pressing up while contracting 
that core. Okay, we're going to quickly switch and we're going to go to flies. So same thing, think of that lower, but below your belly especially, is pulled, pulled in. So we're getting good, solid, full body here today. Anyways, my vacuum cost me, it was, it was a good deal because it was on sale, but I don't have any budget left for a Christmas tree. So we're going to make do for another year. Every year I'm like, I'll buy one after Christmas when they're on sale. Is anybody else like, do you guys do you guys do that? Do you buy lights and Christmas stuff after Christmas? I'm not in the mood anymore. Like every year I say I do it and it's just like, nah, I don't care. It's like the ship sale. I don't want to buy it. Christmas stuff after Christmas. But I should, right? Because you get such good deals. Okay. That is round one. We're doing four rounds like that. adjusting. Yvonne, what's the weather like over there? What, what is the weather like for you all at this point? I gotta be honest, last year I didn't mind winter at all. Um, I felt like I coped really well with it. I felt like it never really got me down last year. I had no vacation last year, of course, because of COVID. And I was fine. I, I, we had a really mild, enjoyable winter last winter. This year, I hate it already and it's not even here. So I have some mindset work to do because that crappy attitude <laughs> is a choice, right? It's up to me to decide how I feel about, about the winter and make the best of it. So, but I'll be honest, I'm not, not into it. <laughs> and yeah, it might be because I spent half of November <laughs> on vacation. It's okay, we head back to Florida, like March 3rd, I think. So I've already got my countdown planned. Basically, I'm not allowed to count down until after New Year's. So I try to focus on the holidays. Like really, December is flying by. I can't believe it's the seventh already. And before we know it, it'll be January. And then January, I know February always goes super fast. Like February's gone in a blink. So in my mind, I'm like, I just gotta endure January. <laughs> That's how I have it all broken down for myself. But honestly, I think one of the keys is actually getting outside and embracing it. Like not, like we can't fight it. This is where we live, right? It gets a good portion of our year. So, um, somebody said a runner the other day was like, "Oh, I need to get a treadmill. I hate running outside in winter." And, you know, I, honestly, it's not my favorite, but the thing is, running outside in the winter, like forcing myself out, helps me. Whew, these are. <sighs> okay, gotta remember that sculpt line, right? One, two, three, after, after, I think you're done. Getting, Dawn, do you feel that way, or do you just go, do you hunker down inside for the winter? I feel like if I get myself to go outside, um, there's very few days that aren't enjoyable if you if you like welcome it and let it in and go with it instead of trying to fight it. So I'm just not it's not there yet. Um, on that note, have you all started thinking about 2022 resolutions? Like I'm already kind of in planning mode. Like I'm thinking about you know what what I want 2022 to look like. Um, 
Has anyone else kind of given any thought to that? Like, I have so many goals, and I love to choose. I love to choose a word each year. Last year, my word was disrupt, um, because I was trying to get myself to be more courageous about doing things that might cause <laughs> no ways. Uh, if, if you know me, you know that's very far from my personality. That is not at all who I am. Um, okay, let's, I know I skipped to do your presses. I grabbed these because they were handy. <laughs> do your presses first, then do your flies. I wanted to get my 30 seconds in. I think this is set three, right? So we have one more set after this. Betty, I feel like I'm going to need your help with the Grand Slam today because I don't even feel like I, I remember. I mean, it's only been a week and a half, but I, guys, I literally did nothing. Like nothing. I didn't do a plank. I did nothing for 10 days. Uh, I walked around. I did walk around. That's it. <laughs> I started the December challenge on December 2nd, the advent calendar. So I'm good with that. And I started one mile runs again when I got home with my son. So I think I missed 10 days of our streak. He hits three years whew, tomorrow. He kept going when I stopped, which I was, I can't even tell you, I'm so enormously proud of him. He, he, he said, are you stopping? I said, I have to, like, I can't even walk. Like, I'm, I'm keeping a streak, which is gonna put my training at, in jeopardy, like, I can't do it. He said, like, do I have to? I don't want to. I said, absolutely not. So he hits three years tomorrow. Uh, we started in 2018. Uh, so I'm, I'm super proud of him for that. I'm, that was the hardest part of this whole foot thing, was having to give up my streak. But I'm kind of just going to put that as a big black hole in the three years. and. I can't say I've streaked anymore, but I'm jumping right back in with him. So, all right, last set of these. So really drive those knees out and make sure that you've got equal weight on both feet. I'm trying to push up simultaneously, or uh, that's not the right word, but you know what I'm saying. I feel like I'd love to do a, a workshop or a Zoom um, for my community and talk about vision casting for 2022. What could 2022 look like for you? Right? What could it look like um, in terms of different areas of your life, right? Like some of you know I hit a huge promotion in my business that I've, I've actually been wanting since November 2018. Um, it kind of came, I wasn't expecting it. I know I knew I was getting closer to it, but going into November, people said, or you, you know, you can try to hit it this month, and I was like, no, I just don't think, just don't think um, my team is quite ready for it yet. And November was just magical. So, you know, it's funny how when something happens for you that you kind of like put into the universe and you let go of it, right? You know, you could say that for weight loss or health. Like, you just kind of go, I want this. This is my goal. I know what's going to happen at some point. I mean, I knew it was going to happen at some point. I was sort of thinking 2022 sometime, but it's just funny how, like it just comes, it just shows up for you. If you, if you just trust 
and keep doing the work, right? You keep, it was a lesson that I learned that I needed to relearn. Just keep doing the work and know that you're gonna get there. Oh my gosh, four seconds, two, one more. And have faith, right? Like, I mean, I see this in our realm, like in terms of working out and weight loss all the time. Like Yvonne, I think you can probably relate to this. Just do the actions and, you know, my co I was on a coaching call last night and she said, I know I'm going to get there. Like, I know where I'm going. I know I'm going to get there. Like, my vision and my goal, my goal and my vision for my goal is so clear in my head. I know that's where I'm going. What do I care if it happens next week or next year? Like, what do I care, right, if I know that's where I'm going? And she, like, she compared it to a road trip, right? Like, I know I'm going to get to Florida. It's okay to stop for a bathroom break. It's okay to pull over and take a picture if, we're, if there's a beautiful view, right? Like, but the, the secret to success in life is that knowing where you're going and that you're gonna get there, right? And so I think November was that for me in my business that I knew that's where I was going, um, I let it go, and it showed up for me. And now my belief and vision have gone through the roof for 22, 22, like what can I do next if I can just do the work and let allow. Okay, so let's go into our grand slam. All right, Betty, I'm gonna need your help. Okay, so we did, I can't even remember, we did our squats. Let's do our push-ups next. Oh, my arms are jelly. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, I think we have 30 seconds of mountain climbers today for our advent calendar. So let's go. You can go, I was testing to see. You can go slow motion. This is slow motion. You can go, and you can go as fast as you, as you can. We have 10 seconds to go. Five seconds. Okay, we're gonna go into, from here, spider plank, which is from Grand Slam. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four. Make sure your shoulder blades are squeezed. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's go into to plank. We need a low plank for our advent challenge. And then we're gonna do high plank for grand slam. So we're gonna press right up into high plank for our grand slam plank. I'm just gonna work my way through, buddy. Make sure you keep track of me. <laughs> okay, pressing. Wait, not yet. Okay, ready? High plank. So 30 seconds high plank. Shoulder blades are squeezed. Lifting and pulling in that core without your hips moving. <sighs> Breathing through it. Oh my gosh, anybody else have jelly arms? And, or is it just me because I have done nothing for two weeks almost? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. We have lunges, right? Lunges for Grand Slam, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you can use weights, nine, make sure your torso is nice and upright. Now we have 10 reverse lunges for advent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this is 
another one. Eight. You want to pull that core in. Nine. Ten. Okay, we did our squats. Was lunges even part of Grand Slam? <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, we're going to do ten burpees. And then we're going to do ten jack burpees. Okay? So starting with burpees. One. Two. Three. <coughs> four. Five. Six. Seven. If you can go faster, you, you go for it. Two more. Nine. Last one. And then we're going into jack burpees. One. Two. still. Let me see if I can remember. Okay, we did our squats. We did our push-ups. We did our lunges. We have to do boat. 100 core. Okay, let's do our boat. And then we're going to do Pilates 100s, okay? What am I missing, Betty? Okay, let's do boat. And then we're gonna go into Pilates 100s. We did our jumping jacks. We did our burpees. I'm gonna miss something. There's so many things now. <laughs> uh, Advent calendar was jumping jacks, reverse lunges, plank, uh, jack burpees, and mountain climbers. So we're good there. Okay, ready? 100 core. Let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Lift. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Lift. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, lift. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, lift. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep it here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, drop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, drop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, drop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, drop. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, buddy, what have I missed? I know we're good for Advent. We did basketball. Basketball jumps. Ten basketball jumps. And glute bridges. Okay, <laughs> let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, glute bridges. Oh, do you have these written down or memorized? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Congratulations on your retirement, Karen. I'm waiting for you to come join my team. <laughs> That's exciting. I'm happy for you. And you know, we talked again on our coaching call last night. Um, I was on a coaching call with my mentor and she talked about, somebody asked, what if I'm capped in the job I'm in? How do I create more 
abundance, more success, more prosperity, more goals if I'm already capped. And she said, we get so stuck in where we're at is where we're meant to be. Sometimes we fail to see there's so much more out there for us. And Karen, I feel like that's where you're at. You're opening the doors to the next chapter to your life. So interesting is good. So have an awesome day. So great to be back. Um, see you all tomorrow.